Hello, splendid viewers, and welcome to Our Noble Lineage. Today we will conclude our exploration on the history of secular and religious vegetarian societies in the West, particularly in Victorian England. John Gilhini, author of Familiar Strangers, The Church and the Vegetarian Movement in Britain between 1809 to 2009, joins us again to share his thoughts on Christian vegetarian societies. His familiarity with the topic began in the early 1990s when Mr. Gilhini participated in Christian vegetarian campaigns by sharing books on the topic penned by vegetarian clergy. In addition, Mr. Gilhini produced the booklet Christian Vegetarianism, A Biblical Approach to Life, which was published by the Fellowship of Life based on animal theology. He has been involved with Veg for Lent as well as the Christian Vegetarian Association UK. In part two we had explored the origins of the Order of the Golden Age, which was a Christian-based association founded with the purpose of spreading the Bible's teaching of compassion for all beings. Putting this belief into practice, Christians who belonged to this organization practiced vegetarianism. Proverbs 15 to 17 in the Holy Bible states that, Better is the dinner of herbs where love is, than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. If you look at basic core Christian tenets of love, mercy, peace, justice, and it's quite a long list really, but it's, it's quite a basic one in terms of that you'll find these aspirations in any religion. Vegetarianism follows on from most of them, you know, yeah. and you could talk about peace in particular as um, something that's quite absent, evidently so, in, in slaughterhouses. Very difficult to reconcile with stabbing animals in the throat, which is basically what it, what it amounts to in real life if you remove all the euphemisms and um, various uh, other softening terms that disguise what really happens. In 1904, a spiritual fellowship called the Order of the Cross was founded to advocate Christian vegetarianism. Members were pacifists and lived a compassionate lifestyle through a plant-based diet. Well, they were actually founded by three executive council members of the Order of the Golden Age, Howard Whiston, Dr. Robert Perks, and the Reverend John Todd Ferrier. They were founded in 1904, but he'd just retired from the Congregational Ministry in Macclesfield after 21 years as a, a congregational minister. In 1903, the Reverend gave a farewell address to the Congregational Church to explain his departure. Following is an excerpt. I have heard the cry of the animal world, and I leave you that I may in one form of my future work fight the battle of the souls that are down lower than myself in the scale of evolution, but which some day will come up to bless the life that has had compassion upon their helplessness. But I have seen and heard more than that. I have seen it as a vision before me that men will continue to have a thousand diseases with which he is afflicted, and that he will never be healed of them till his vision of life is truer, his ambition higher and less earthly, and his sympathy and love become like the sympathy and love of God and the Christ whom he professes to revere and serve. I believe through most of its history in the 20th century, they've, they've adopted the idea that they don't really need to advertise themselves, mm -hmm. that true seekers on the right path will find them. And for that reason, you only really see Order of the Cross advertisements in vegetarian publications because they, they gather that vegetarians who may be Christian will mm -hmm. contact them. Any campaigning they do in terms of promoting vegetarianism tends to be through the vegetarian society in which they've held some quite prominent positions, uh, mm -hmm. the president uh, on a few occasions over the years. The Bible Christian Church was established in 1809 in Salford, England by Reverend William Cowherd. Reverend Cowherd's congregation members took a vow to refrain from eating meat in following with the Bible's teachings. Many believed in the kinship between animals and nature. The Bible Christian Church were um, a vegetarian sect and to some extent they promoted it as best they could within the Salford area that, that they operated. The Bible Christian sect had some very um, influential figures. 
the um, first MP for Salford, for example, uh, Joseph Brotherton, one of the mayors, um, William Harvey, and James Simpson, who I believe had another um, quite prominent role locally, civically. And it was really Bible Christian personnel which occupied the key role, positions in the Vegetarian Society when it was founded in 1847. In 1902, Dr. Josiah Oldfield created a new organization which he called the Fruitarian Society. In 1952, Dr. Oldfield wrote, It is for us to spread that light of infinite pity for every single creature that has suffered, that self-sacrificial fellowship which can wipe tears from every eye, from enmity to amity, from slaving to brotherhood which fires us with the service and steadfast faith that in the fruitarian world of the future we shall march nearer and nearer to that realm of God wherein there shall be no more need for pain and suffering nor death. We must each one consciously deny to ourselves any comradeship with the butchery of the past. We must joy only in angelic fellowship of the intermediate Eden with the future of the eternal. Oldfield after qualifying as a barrister, trained as a medical doctor and qualified as a Harley Street surgeon in 1897, mm -hmm. which became his, his chosen career then for the rest of his, his life. In 1901, he visited India and he met up with Gandhi on, on several occasions during that time when, of course, Gandhi was getting a bit more mm -hmm. politically um, astute and active. Their friendship was entirely um, based on their love of India and, and vegetarianism. Please stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. After this brief message, we'll be back with our show on early vegetarian movements in the United Kingdom. Thank you for joining us again for today's Our Noble Lineage on early religious and secular vegetarian associations in the United Kingdom. Another Christian-based vegetarian association is the Fellowship of Life. It was founded in 1973 and its mission is in line with the biblical message from Micah 6 to 8 which states, to do justly love, mercy, and walk humbly with your God. Well, the Fellowship of Life was really a 1970s rerun of the Order of the Golden Age, if you look at their actual primary focus, which was on taking vegetarianism and animal rights issues to the churches, where the Order of the Golden Age may have diversified a bit into theosophy and spiritualism at times, um, the Fellowship of Life tended to embrace a new age um, type of practices, aromatherapy, holistic medicine and, and pacifism and, and so forth. But if you look at the actual letters which, which the Fellowship of Life were getting published in Anglican and Church of Scotland papers, they nearly all related to vegetarianism or animal rights issues. According to its mission statement, the Christian Vegetarian Association, or CVA, is an international non-denominational ministry of believers dedicated to respectfully promoting healthy, Christ-centered and God-honoring living among Christians. Although there's dozens and dozens of books on the subject that campaigners could use as, as handbooks, to my mind, the most dynamic and visionary blueprint available for anyone who really wants to, to begin with this type of activity is a book called Good News for All Creation, which was published in 2002 by uh, the Christian Vegetarian Association. And really that deals with all the issues in a fresh, detailed 
acceptable way, and it does start with the activists themselves, and, and really um, explains that if you want to promote vegetarianism within the churches, well, you've got to deal with, this, with yourself first. You've got to know what you're capable of achieving and what are the most likely methods of doing so. So Good News for All Creation really um, is the, the handbook for today's generation as far as I can tell. In more recent times with the appalling conditions that animals endure on factory farms, Christian leadership has raised awareness about this inhumane treatment of fellow sentient beings. In 1990, um, Pope John Paul II said that animals have souls. The current Pope, his own is Pope Benedict, has spoken out disapproving of the way animals are confined and says it makes a mockery of God's creation and so on. Do you think it's possible that the vegetarianism can be something that the whole of Christianity can unite on? It's something certainly vegetarian Christians can unite on in the sense that even in the 1880s the Order of the Golden Age was an ecumenical society and I think there's something about looking as life and death issues, and that's what we're talking about, as, as an actual priority that somehow makes any type of um, doctrinal sectarian dispute ridiculous and it puts it into that type of a perspective. There's a massive amount of humane heritage that the Catholic hierarchy could draw upon a lot more than it does in terms of attitudes towards animals. Obviously St. Francis is infamous, but there are countless saints and many vegetarian ones whose um, insights could be embraced a lot more than is the case. Climate change is a global issue that affects all people, regardless of ethnicity, religion or social standing. In a recent report by the World Watch Institute, livestock production and its byproducts is shown to cause more than 50% of all greenhouse gas emissions. The current Archbishop of Canterbury, Ron Williams, has been outspoken in some ways about uh, climate change and has encouraged people to um, do what they can to avert climate change. There's ever more evidence showing that the meat diet has a huge effect on climate change and that vegetarian diet would be probably the best thing an individual can actually do. From all sectors of society, people are calling for action to halt global warming. Recognizing the alarming statistics, religious clergy are also calling for responsible Christian stewardship of our planet. The Christian Vegetarian Association of the UK tends to be in touch with church hierarchy quite often. I believe uh, one bishop went vegan for Lent recently and the Bishop of London is a vegetarian for precisely this reason. It's something which is quietly starting to filter through. In earlier times, as we do now, vegetarian advocates do their best to inform people about the cruelties of the slaughterhouse and the foodborne diseases that it promulgates. They wrote of the cruelties of vivisection. In 1911, Dr. Robert Bell published the first of many books about his research on diet and cancer. The book was called The Cancer Scourge and How to Destroy It. Dr. Bell found that the consumption of meat causes cancer and recommended a vegetarian diet for optimal health. Vegetarian activists today and in yesteryears aim to awaken the compassion of humanity by demonstrating the God nature within every being. They look to God's compassion and the best and noblest aspects of human beings as a guide to their own dietary choices. Now, as with the, the Christian Vegetarian Associations of today, there's a tendency to, um, to say, well, you know, if we're sincere spiritually, then, you know, let's have nothing to do with killing animals for no better reason than the fact that they happen to taste pleasant, so people say. These earlier pioneers paved the way for the vegan movement today. Every aspect of current conversations about veganism was present in the historical vegetarian societies. As more and more people awaken to the compassionate diet, the true days of harmony between humans and animals lies before us. If we all walk the path of mercy and virtue, we will all certainly greet the dawn of a golden age. Kind viewers, thank you for joining us for Our Noble Lineage. Stay tuned to Supreme Master Television. 
wishing you and yours a beautiful and joyous day in God's love. Visit familiarstrangers.co.uk for more info on author John Kilheny and the upcoming release of his book Familiar Strangers, the Church and the Vegetarian Movement in Britain between 1809 to 2009. To learn more about the Order of the Golden Age, please visit www.ordergoldenage.co.uk. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash nl.